this was a slow movement, second movement of um, four-hand piano sonata in E minor by George Onslow. George Onslow was an English composer by uh, English descent, and uh, he wrote two four-hand piano sonatas. This was Opus 7 from 1811, and he wrote also a second one, Opus 22, and this is the sonata from 1823. And this second sonata was a most play, played sonata in the first part of the 19th century. And uh, in, in Paris, 1833, Chopin and Franz Liszt meet for the first time in one salon, and they played a Onslow sonata the second, not this, second sonata. When I saw now Chopin, Chopin's musical language is very fascinating, and Chopin is one of the most famous salon pianists. He played all his life in the salons, mostly in the uh, musical artistic salons, and um, from his youth in the in Poland, in his uh, bird uh, city in Poland, he played also in the salons from the beginning. And um, his father tried to organize one um, scholarship for Chopin later. And he didn't get scholarship because this um, ministry said he played so many times in salons, he is not so... Uh, serious musician, but in he, he played in salons of this ministry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, this year is the artistic salon is the team. So I'm always uh, very um, um, surprised when I play a music on of the end of the 18th century or just beginning of 19th century and I uh, look and I play music that sounds like Chopin. And uh, many years, 10 or 20 years before Chopin's birth. And they always ask me how it's possible this. And uh, so I will, um, that's my own um, view. I will try to say who was the predecessors uh, of Chopin. Uh, first one was, was Maria Szymanowska. Uh, Szymanowska was born 20 years before Chopin, and she studied with the same teacher like Chopin, with Elsner in Warsaw, and her musical language and her forms are same like Chopin. She composed many of waltzes, mazurkas, polonaise, uh, studies, etudes, it's very similar like Chopin. It's, um, it's not surprising because they was with the same teacher. But she uh, was a very um, successful pianist. She toured the, uh, through two, uh, fully, uh, all Europe, especially in the 20s, 1820s, and before she settling permanently in St. Petersburg, and where she directed one influential salon. Uh, Szymanowska was connected with Luigi Cherubini, uh, Joachim Rossini, Johann Nepomuk Hummel, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and with John Field, of course. Uh, Hummel and Field, uh, we know everybody, Field and Nocturne, and uh, connection with Chopin, it's very known. And uh, Field is uh, born in Dublin. This is the Field. He's born in Dublin. 1782, and 10 years later, from 1793 to 1802, he lived in London, and he was a pupil um, of Clementi. Clementi was not only his teacher, um, he was also in the firm, in, in the business of Clementi, for 10 years. He was very connected. Hummel, Johann Nepung Hummel, just under um, field. 
He was also in London for one year. He's born in uh, 1778 in Bratislava. Um, and he was a um, pupil of Mozart, everybody knows this. <laughs> and in London, he was 12 years old in this time. From 1791 and 1792, he was uh, one year in London with his father, like a child prodigy. And this was a big sensation uh, for London. And one London critic said this is the most surprisingly concert that he ever um, saw in London. At the same time, in London um, was also a very close friend of John Field, George Pinto. Um, he is born in London, 1785, and he was an original violinist, but also a pianist. And he was very close friend with Field. Pinto wrote also a piano sonatas, and he dedicated to John Field, and opposite also. But he died only with 21. Perhaps he was the most um, gifted musician from these times, and this is a very big loss of his die. He had an alcohol problem. In these young years, it's very amazing. In the middle is Jan Ludwig Dussek. Um, everybody know him. He ran also a piano factory in London at the same time. And I think he is the main figure of these all uh, people who developed this sound that uh, end with, uh, with Chopin sound. We can see this. Uh, I look at to the database of all London concerts from last 10 years on the 18th century. Dussek came to London after Paris. He came 1789 and played on the 1st of June uh, one solo piece in one concert. And later, the next year, he was in the three co uh, big concerts, and his first piano concerto was in the March, uh, 1790. He had a huge success after this um, piano concerto, and you can see in the next year, 1791, he played many times in London. There are concerts run by Kramer or concerts run by Salomon, or also other concerts. But this was two of the most prominent series, was Kramer and Salomon concerts. And uh, Dussek's um, wife, Cory, uh, was the daughter of Dussek's uh, piano partner. Um, and she played also piano and uh, harp. And you can see in the second concert, in the 1791, uh, Dussek uh, uh, played the wife um, concerto from piano and harp. And uh, this was amazing success. And uh, all uh, her wife played in the most concerts uh, in, uh, in uh, these 10 years. And this uh, concerto for a piano and harp also was a big success. You can see that it was repeated many times uh, during these uh, 10 years. Uh, Dusik played in the April one uh, piano quartet, and then again uh, piano concerti. And we can see uh, in May, it was the first concert of Hummel in London, and Hummel played his own variations. He was 13 years old at this time. A little bit later, Hummel played a piano concerto in June, and uh, Dussek played just two days after his own piano concerto, and he uh, accompanied his uh, wife uh, on piano. Uh, she sang one song. Um, next year, we can see Dussek and uh, played many concerts, 
uh, pia uh, mostly com uh, piano concerti, but we can see also Hummel. This was very uh, amazing concert in uh, April uh, 1792. Hummel played a Haydn trio in A flat major, and Haydn was there in the concert. Um, and Haydn was very amazed about this um, playing of Hummel, and he um, went to the audience, uh, to the uh, stage, and gave him a kiss and uh, a, ma a coin, gu uh, one guinea, and um, he was, he said, child and played, so excellent. <laughs> one month later, Hummel played a Mozart piano concerto and his own composition. Everybody know Hummel's transcriptions uh, of uh, Mozart piano concerti. Hummel played also uh, his own sonata and own song, but very interesting is that Hummel played one song together with Dussek's wife. So we can see the connection between Dussek and Hummel was very close. And of course, Haydn, Hummel and Dussek were very close together. Uh, also, the letter of Haydn to Dussek's father is very famous. In this letter, Haydn said, Dussek is the best musician that I know. Of course, Mozart was died <laughs> in this time. Uh, that means Haydn said very clear, Dussek is the best musician at this time. And we see Hummel was very connected with uh, Dussek during this year. And I mean, my opinion is that is also a reason why later Hummel's music um, sounds uh, so romantic. But he pl uh, wrote music in this way from 1815. Very uh, um, amazing, uh, very popular concert, concerto in A minor, from Hummel, everybody know it sounds like Chopin concert, uh, like Chopin concerti. So next year, 1793, Dussek played many times in the big concerts. Mostly of them were his own piano concerti with orchestra, but also two times he played violin sonatas in big concerts. That was very uncommon in this time because normally in these huge concerts was only orchestral music or concerti or Sinfonia Concertante, or singers with piano accompaniment or with orchestra. But one chamber music word was very uncommon in this time. Um, and Dussek played with two um, leading uh, violinists from this time, Janievich and with Djornovic, um, he played uh, violin sonatas. And on the end of um, 1793 was the first uh, public, um, first public performance from, uh, of uh, John Field. He played a lesson, uh, that was uh, one concert uh, of, um, I think that was a uh, one Clementi concert. And Field and Clementi presented his pupil Field on, in the, in the, in the pu first public. Next, in, in the next year, 1794, Field play it uh, also in April one um, sonata, solo work, and in May he played a Dussek concerto. Um, this is very interesting because Field um, was very, he was very influenced by Dussek in his works later. And um, this is first time that uh, Field played a Dussek concerto, later he played many times uh, Dussek Concerti. Uh, and now, uh, next year, uh, came f to the, for the first uh, public concert with Pinto. He played a violin. And the next year, we see many Dussex public concerti. And um, in the 1798, played for the first time Pinto and Dussek together. Uh, Pinto was a concert master, and uh, Dussek played his military piano concerto. This was the first time that he played this concerto. And this concerto has two movements. And this was the 
most successful piano concerto from these times. You can see later in uh, 1798, 99, uh, so many times was repeat this concerto, I think for 10 times. That was very uncommon because audience want to all, always the new pieces. <laughs> now we will listen from the first, this concerto have only two movements. Uh, second movement is the military rondo and first movement have very nice part. So that is uh, one part from the first movement. So we can listen clear the language that later used Chopin. <laughs> this is concerto from 1798. So in one concert in May, in same year, played all three guys, Pinto, Field, and Dussek. Field played Dussek's concerto, and Pinto was a concert master. Dussek was not there, but his concerto was there. <laughs> and uh, next year, uh, Pinto and Field was many times together. You can see here in next year in May and also next year 1800. Pinto and Field played many times together in concerts. And uh, one time played also Dussek with Kramer together, concerto for two for the piano by Dussek. So 1799 in February played Field for the first time his own piano concerto. And uh, this concerto in this shape from this uh, first uh, performance, we have not this concerto because uh, score from this concert concerto is from, um, is from 10 years or 15 years later because field um, reworked a little bit. So we cannot know how was this concerto, but uh, from people from this time, they said this concerto was very brilliant, but very straight not in a romantical style. In this time it was only Dusek who, who had this really exceptionally romantical style language. Thank you so much.